Hi, this is Brian Oliva at Gethsemane Music. Today we're going to take our first look at the Moog One's Arpeggiator. At its most basic level, an arpeggiator scans the notes being held down on the keyboard and plays them one at a time in a cyclic and rhythmic fashion. This description doesn't even begin to come close to describing the Moog One's Arpeggiator. Octave order, pendulum mode, and random patterns allow the arpeggiator to become an extra set of hands creating an electronic counterpoint, generate cascades of notes, and to form the solid base of a rhythmic groove. The arpeggiator exists at the synth level, and all arpeggiator parameters are saved with their respective timbres as part of the preset. In this way, a single preset can have up to three active arpeggiators, one per synth, at any time, each playing a different pattern, using a different sound, and in a different zone on the keyboard. The arpeggiators, along with the sequencers, LFOs, NEGs can be synced to the tempo of the master clock to create a unified rhythmic performance. Unlike a sequencer, which is playing patterns of specific notes stored in memory, the arpeggiator is generating data in real time. Based on the notes being played, it's a bit more interactive and always musically related to the performance. We're going to try to keep it a little simple in this first video, and we'll start just by going over the arpeggiator features and controls. The arpeggiator controls are in the lower left hand corner. The first control is the on switch. It's a button that lights up. If it's lit up, the arpeggiator for the active synth is turned on and running. If it's not lit, the arpeggiator for the active synth is off. Just a caution to make sure that you've selected the correct synth before you start messing with the arpeggiator so that it's active and working on the particular timbre you intended. Next is the rate knob. The rate knob sets the speed of the arpeggiator. The actual tempo values range from 10 to 280 beats per minute. The arpeggiator rate can run as an independent speed or it can be synchronized with the master clock using the parameters accessed in the arpeggiator more page. We'll cover that shortly. The rate knob LED will flash at the current setting. Next to that is the octave order button. Traditionally, when an arpeggiator is set to play over a multi-octave range, all of the notes are played in the current octave, and then the patterns repeated at an octave higher, etc. When the octave order switches on, the arpeggiator pattern will play the first note of the pattern in each octave, then the second note of the pattern repeated in each octave, etc. For example, if the notes in a pattern are a C major triad, C, E, and G, and the octave button is set to 3, with octave order set off, the pattern generated would be C1, E1, G1, C2, E2, G2, and C3, E3, G3. With the octave order set to on, the pattern would be C1, C2, C3, E1, E2, E3, and G1, G2, G3. Next to that is the pendulum button. The pendulum changes the way the pattern is repeated when the pendulum button is set to on. Once the entire arpeggiator pattern has played through, the pendulum functions will play the entire arpeggiator pattern again in the reverse order, and then the pattern will play again normally. This back and forth motion is similar to that of a pendulum. When the pendulum button is off, the pattern plays in its usual order. At the bottom, you have the octave button. Increasing the octave value will cause the arpeggiator pattern to play through once in the original octave and then to repeat in successive octaves pitched higher or lower than the original. Press the octave button to cycle through the list of values. The corresponding LEDs will light. The minimum value is 1, which plays the pattern in its original octave. The maximum value is 4, which plays the pattern in its original octave, then an octave higher or lower then two octaves higher or lower, and then three octaves higher or lower. The choice between higher and lower is made using the direction button. The direction button, when multiple octaves are selected using the octave button, this direction parameter specifies whether these additional octaves are, are higher, going up, or lower, going down, in pitch than the original octave. Press the direction button to cycle through the list of values. The corresponding LED will light. When up-down is selected, the pattern first 
repeats in octaves pitched higher than the original, and then reverses direction to play through the selected octaves to reach the original pitch. When down up is selected, the pattern first repeats in the octaves pitched lower than the original, and then reverses direction to play through the selected octaves to reach the original pitch. The pattern button is the button that specifies the pattern in which the arpeggiator notes are played. When set to up, the notes are arpeggiated from the lowest pitch to the highest. Down, they are arpeggiated from the highest pitch to the lowest. Order, the notes are arpeggiated based on the order in which they were played. Note that in order mode, a held key can be released and then immediately played again to change its order in the pattern, creating a new feel and groove while performing. When set to random, the notes are arpeggiated in a random order. I'll show you later that in random mode, the parameters under the Arpeggiator More page offer a choice between both repeating and non-repeating random patterns. Pressing the associated triangular More button in the upper right corner of the Arpeggiator module will reveal a second level of parameters that can be accessed and modified using the interactive portion of the center console. These additional parameters are displayed in the bottom portion of the screen. The right pane shows the current value of the front panel hardware parameters for this module. Tweaking these panel controls will update their values here. The scroll bar at the right edge indicates the current row. Rotate the master encoder clockwise to highlight the next row of parameters. Rotating the master encoder counterclockwise will select the previous row. Rotate the soft knobs below the parameter to change its value. In some cases, the soft knob simply turns the function on or off. In other cases, it may choose from a list of values or settings. And in other cases, the soft knob is dialing in a value, either absolute or as a percentage. Now we'll take a quick look at each setting. Sync can be either off or on. When sync is off, the arpeggiator is free to run at its own speed and clock rate. When sync is on, the arpeggiator and master clock are synchronized and the master clock determines the arpeggiator tempo. Clock division. When synced, the master clock provides a tempo base. Divisions of that master clock are used to set the arpeggiator speed. Changing the clock division parameter specifies the timing in terms of quarter note beats. Note that when sync is turned on, rotating the arpeggiator rate knob on the front panel will select quantized clock divisions as shown in the clock division section. Clock timing, either straight, dotted, or triplet. When synced, clock timing provides a further modification of the step duration, allowing for a wider selection of note timings related to the master clock tempo. When set to straight, the timing of each note is played as specified by the clock division. Dotted, the timing of each note is modified to play as a dotted note or one and a half times the value specified by the clock division parameter. For triplet, the timing of each note is modified to play as if it were one note of a triplet, or two-thirds of the value specified by the clock division parameter. Gate length can be set to 1 to 100%. Adjusting the gate length parameter changes the duration of each arpeggiated note in the pattern. Lower values will be more percussive and abrupt. Higher values will be more flowing and legato. Follow swing, either off or on. In the More section for the Master Clock, the Master Clock includes parameters related to adding swing to the beat. When synced to the Master Clock, the arpeggiator can either follow this swing information or ignore it and play strictly to the beats per minute setting. Note Reset, off or on. This parameter specifies how the timing of the arpeggiator will behave when a new note is played on the keyboard. When the note reset parameter is on, the arpeggiator begins instantly resetting the downbeat timing of the current clock division to match the note as it's played. When the note reset parameter is off, the arpeggiator will wait for the start of the next specified clock division before beginning the pattern. Pendulum mode, once or twice. The pendulum mode parameter is different than the pendulum function of the front panel. Here the parameter specifies if the notes at the extreme ends of the arpeggiator pattern are played once before reversing direction or twice. 
once for the last note on the way up, and again for the first note on the way down. This allows the Moog One arpeggiator to accurately mimic the behavior of different arpeggiators from different keyboards that have been popular over the years. Random note, non-repeating or repeating. This parameter specifies how the notes in a random pattern will be played. Choosing a non-repeating pattern prevents the same notes from being played twice or more times in succession, so that the pattern is slightly less random. By choosing repeating, no constraints are imposed on the randomness of the pattern, and the same note may be played twice or more in a row. And finally, there's one last function at the bottom of the list that I found called Note Hold Mode. It defaults to reset on new, but can be switched to toggle on and off, and I haven't quite figured out what it does yet. By default, the arpeggiator behaves the way you'd expect. When you switch to toggle on and off mode, it gets a little weird. If you hit the same note you started with, it does turn it on and off. But if you add notes to it, or hit different notes, it starts building. So every note you play adds something new. If you play a note that you've already played, it kind of resets back a step. But as soon as you start hitting new notes, it keeps going and starts building again. Again, I can't find any documentation for this, and I haven't really found a good way to control it to understand what it's doing. If anyone has more info on this function, please leave some notes in the comments. Or if you find any documentation, let us know where you found it. That's about it for today. Thanks for watching. If you found it useful, please like and share the video, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching.